Welcome back to Collins Road here. Bit of a late kickoff for the men's stag trophy match between Naval the home side and Fraser Tech. It is also stag trophy. Naval the holders. My name is Stephen Jenkinson. Great to have you wherever you are tuned in. Good afternoon to Nick Shoston as well. How are you going? Good Thanks for having me again today. Uh, looking forward to the game today between Fraser Tech and Naval. I get to see Melbourne play this year, but I um, watched Fraser Tech last week and I was really impressed with a few of their players, including the back three. So, I've heard some good things today about Melbourne's back three, so I'm looking forward to seeing those, uh, those guys play. Well, we've just seen the women's final. Um, Melbourne managing to win that. Very well worthy of the final that one was. Um We'll go 7 0, not 57 0. Three minutes gone, first half. And um, Nick just throws the tech. We're going to have to watch that line. Make sure those holes don't appear for Bodine and others to run through. Yeah, well, we've got Karaka and Sigenskin. Good start from there, but Karaka, he cut back really well there. Powerful runner. Restart here from Fraser Tech. 
Yeah. 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 Well, I know this is your first time watching Melville this season. You asked me to look out for Bowden Walker. He does have a decent yeah, boot on him. He does. In the second final position here. And the touchline for Kari Togia's throw on the halfway line. Short line out for Fraser Tech. One there. And he's spun out straight for Tech. Tommy has it. Now it's a chip through. Yeah, a bit of a nothing kick there from Lansdowne though. And Max Ray were returning it. With interest. And sitting there for the first five from Fraser Tech quite well. Oh, great side of the run. Oh, 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 just going to get on to it. Oh, 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 Max Ray was playing oh, on. And Michael Winter blows for a knock on just a bit of a haphazard ha um, pass there, Nick. Yeah, there was a big tackle there, and either you're still down, the young man. I could just be winded at the moment, but it's a good shot on him. We'll just take a break here for a second while he gets some treatment, a bit of water, and sucks in a few big ones. Yeah, one of the Fraser Tech players going down. Yeah, it was a good shot on him. Doesn't need a shoe. Um, when you get a good tackle on it, you know, the body doesn't quite like being bent in the wrong directions. No, I think when he looks back at the footage, you'll see that he might have been better to, to let go of that a little bit sooner or perhaps hold on to it. Um, but certainly good play. He's um, broken the gap and made a sliding run there. Well done. They played well the back three last week for Fraser Tech. So again, looking pretty expensive, running it out from the 22. And then returning that kick from Mazzara. Yeah, but Fraser Tech, they've got to be careful though. Can you check whether it's like this? Yep, I don't think it is. Just come here on the 9 metres inside Melville's heart. Ranasaki with the feet. He's looking at this little half back at the start. Nippy around the air, controlling the forwards. Um, like you talked about earlier, good box kick, just got caught by the wind. As Waka makes it some metres. Makes a way we're having to do some tidying up the fast game behind him almost. And there's an advantage for an offside. But that is current right. Sorry, it's just I don't know where, I don't know where that's Oh, look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Five minutes? Five minutes, three, two, yep. Yeah. So I apologise for the off camera stuff there, just checking to make sure the live stream's working because um, according to what I've got, it should be, but hey, I'm glad it is. Line out, a couple of metres outside the Fraser Tech, 22. Cox with the throw. Aaron Priest doing the calling. And oh, goes down to Patrick O'Sullivan. And Melbourne still have it. And Melbourne just holding here. It's there for Moriaki. And good run there from Hayden Spencer, cut nephew of the assistance for Melville, Carlos Spencer. Waka with it, long ball out there to Trey Pohipi. Well, Melbourne going back scrappy. with a little bit and yeah, um, yeah. pushed into touch as well. A little bit scrappy there, might have been better see if just shuffling it out and just see them going through the hands. They look good before that. So maybe just trying to be a little bit more expensive than he needed to be. And this seems to be the problem last week too. You know, they did quite well in the end to beat um, Morrinsville comfortably. As now have <coughs> stolen one against the throw. Moriaki with it. Sitting in the back there. One's one of the boards running off. Dan Popping playing in his 50th match. Spencer again. Putting it up hard. And just sort of the 10 metre line, still in Fraser Tech territory. Comes out to Masarewa. Here go Masarewa, tipped through. Chase coming in here from 
Paddy Paddica, Paul Beatsy run into touch, and a big one there for Melville. Melville just happy to play through a uh, territory game here, chopping into the corners and waiting for Fraser Ted to make a mistake. Do let us know wherever you are tuning in. Great to have you for the 2020 Waikato Rugby Club season. Just seen Melville take out the women's Gallagher Premiership. See throw there from finding the man, Fraser Tech, and they're just mauling still with it. Michael Winter brings the, allows the Melville backs to come forward. And Tech still looking to just maul it a little bit more. Well, he's getting involved in the game early. And a couple of good tackles there, and he's keen to hit the ball up. Comes back to Lansdowne. And it's a good kick on, on him as well. Fantastic touch by now. So they get all the pressure off there. And they'll reset just outside their 10 metre line. Melbourne was a position at the moment. Um, Fraser Tech getting it occasionally. But um, good game so far. Yeah, apart from that first try there, it's been really evenly matched. Melbourne obviously looking to play the position. It's Fraser Tech gather it again. Great job. Right and that's uh, George Dyer, the co-captain, co making, making some inroads. how well structured this game is so far. Nick had uh, fell to pieces there a little bit. Yeah, well, just guilty a little bit here, trying to go a bit fast perhaps. Um, but we interesting to see Fraser Tech here with the ball. They haven't had a lot of it, and a lot of it they have had has been in their 22. It's been very defensive at the moment, but Melbourne, like I said, just happy to play that position game and, and also the territory game. Hold the ball, a couple of runoffs off the ruck, and they're just kicking into the corners, which is a good, a good way to start, especially when you've got seven on the board. A bit of a soft try there from Fraser Tech's defence that um, Bobby and Wokow run through it. Um, they seem to be holding out quite well. And Dickinson feed the ball into the scrum, just the Melbourne side of halfway. You seem to see Lansdowne has been keen to get that ball wide, so you seem to see if they use the hands. And they're coming in. Lansdowne finding Bunts. Bunts in a bit of a gap. There's numbers out here. It'll be Liam Coops labelling. No, it will, he will offload it. And it is Vela Safari who, and now Fraser Tech have scored one back for them. Yeah, well that's a great ball. Um, one side winger came across there and just created a little bit of a diversion and held that defence up. And it was a nice skip ball across to Bunce who just put the gap and um, did everything right by just drawing the defenders, and sending it wide and unselfishly the full back just gave it one man further and Safari scored over in the corner. So really well worked back try. Uh, coaches would be happy with that, they'll be patting themselves on the back right now. And the conversion right on the left hand touch line, mate. Yeah, you can see Bruce Pickerson there in the pack. Um, he's really excited by that. He's uh, geeing up his backs and his forwards. It's a good way to come back. Kyle Cook Savage in the top five for the point scorers this season, leading the try scoring table. Really impressed with the back break of Fraser Chip last week, and they were pretty electric. There were a couple of breakout tries there from Michael, but. More and all the back three dominated the game last week. It was basically them that just set that try up. Mm. And uh, ball leading man. Conversion. Yep. Chinga is in from touch, left hand side, and it's just going to go left and stay left as well. Yeah, and perhaps that's a point of a breeze. So 7-5-11 minutes gone. Great to have you wherever you are tuning into this Stag Trophy Week 8 match between Melville, the home side, and defenders of the Stag Trophy against Fraser Tech. Let us know wherever you're tuning in from, who you're supporting. Just tuned in, Mel took out the women's uh, premiership final against Hamilton Old Boys earlier, 1910. And uh, the Bees, Fraser Tech now seem to get up over Mel. And good, ball, good kick down there, baited. Fraser Tech tidying up just outside the 22. Just a comment there I see about the, um, the quality of the referee here today. And it's been pretty good. I'd say last week was pretty good too. And yeah. When you don't notice the ref, you know he's doing a good job. Yeah, well, one of 31 is the call. Um, the referee's Luke match away we're now. He's a great sevens ball carrier. Comes back right hand side for Bodine Walker. 
trying to find a support player, but can't walk down just a short of the 10 metre line. Fades the tech territory. Yeah, good tackle there by Hankerville. Short pass there from to Max Arrayla. Here now for Lloyd Guy's break. And Fadeen Walker ends up with it. Hayden Spencer now. And he's still inside the 10 metre line. Fades the tech territory. And Oliver Toma making some run. Spencer getting involved again. He's really throwing himself around, isn't he? He's just finding himself just short, you know, on that short pass. It's an advantage for an offside. Oh, step, Rivers re harnessed free. Oh. Left inside to Riku Murasaki. Stupid Georgie going the wrong way there. And they oh, get an advantage to get a penalty. Yep. That's well worked by Melville. Some good play there. A little bit of interplay there close to the ruck. Yeah, we. Walker didn't realise that uh, he had a support player on the right, left back inside to uh, Morisaki, who is a nutty little halfback. Um, was he putting the wheels that was um, outside Fodin Walker? But um, they'll take the three me though. I've been impressed with Spencer so far. He's been getting himself around the field, making some good tackles. He's not afraid to run the ball up. He found himself here in a position I don't think where he's expecting to get the ball, to pick up off the lock. Yeah, the good two. thing is there when you um, when you're not expecting the ball to make sure you go in with soft hands. Yep. Just in case the ball comes out to you. And the kick from Rehana is down the middle, not an issue. And Melville extend their lead. It is now 10-5. 14 minutes gone. First half. In this week 8 match between Melville and Fraser Tech. Also doubling as Stag Trophy. Bevan Jenkinson in commentary alongside me. Nick Shoston. Great to have you wherever you are tuning in. Let us know who's supporting where you're watching from. I know the women's match. We had someone from Brussels. From Kittle of Belgium watching. So great to see rugby when they can't watch it. Place due to COVID 19. It's gone deep. Walker will return a deep kick, maybe. Oh. We kick that a bit too much into the wind. A touch point of those on the 10 metre line still. Melbourne territory. Yeah. It's a good start from Melbourne. They're playing the sensible game here. Again, they've just gone for touch, waiting for Fraser Tech to make a mistake. The Fraser Tech are just happy to let them do that at the moment, so they're just sort of going through the motions at the moment. Fraser Tech lined up very wide here to the left. To Buddy right out on the wing and not far from him is Coombs Fabling. Yes. Set up that try to kill. There's a break here for Fraser Tech. He's waiting for some support though. Once again. He's going to find Bunce. Oh, some great hands. And Coombs yeah, right. Fabling leaves it behind. Yeah. And he's not gone. It's unfortunate for Liam Coombs Fabling. Playing well today, just a little knock on there, but that was a great breakaway picked up quickly by Jordan Bunce. Great support play, but just found himself alone there and tried to throw that miracle ball. Guilty again, maybe perhaps of the same last week, perhaps just should hold that last pass and wait for the support to get there. Now, now on defence. Looking for that touchline again and looking for Rahana to. Deep clearance. Yeah, right now standing on the first receiver, but you've also got Fabian Walker who's not standing too far away as well. Both of them got a, quite a decent boot on them. Yeah, um, also Walker's calling been. a lot of the shots out there today. He's really busy there with the uh, communication out wide. He was impressed earlier on with Walker's clearance. He's got a big boot on him. Yeah, it'll come to Fabian Walker. He's not going to kick this though. Dan Pop and Dan Simpkinson having to do some <coughs> ducking over way. And Michael Woods is telling Fraser Tech to get out of it. Oh, I don't think that went where it was supposed to. Not finding it though. Here for advance to Buddy. Now to Coombs Fabling. To buy a quick savage. He can run. Got to watch his legs. Oh, oh. it's a great tackle. Great yeah. tackle. Now we're hunting. Looking for a turnover. Fraser Tech though. Just getting there on numbers. That must have been pretty close to another turnover. But it uh, didn't happen. Here for Nathan though. Inside. Come on, numbers out here. Yeah, great run. 
And you can hear the orders going out there from the coaches. Yeah, Wayne Beacon's always got a lot to say when he up, paces up and down the sideline like he does. Yeah. Uh, good tackle over on that other side there by young Dan Singleton. Doesn't look he's been out of school long and there's not a lot of meat on him and he really um, got around the outside and made a fantastic try saving tackle on Cook Savage who was set off just down that right flank. For someone of his size actually, he, uh, both in defence and attack, he does very well. For, um, yeah, I'd be interested in his age. Needed. He doesn't look too old and he's, um, he's playing like he's been out there in a few more years than he looks, that's for sure. Quite a nice guy too. If he, um, he didn't come up to us today because we're a bit busy um, with the women's final, but he normally comes up and says his jersey number's being changed to the program. Um, <laughs> yep. This is my confusion early on. There's a knock on here from he can probably both afford, sides. He can probably afford to give the bigger jerseys to somebody else, I think, in yeah. the frame at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Could be suffering from a bit of a pecking order in the team, perhaps, in his size. There's a little knock on there. Yeah, both sides are uh, guilty of losing the ball forward there. Also impressive with number 12 for uh, Fraser Tech today, Terry Ponger. He's playing pretty well. All right. Had, had, had a, had a um, undisputed game. He did a lot last week too, yeah. but um, not mentioned too, too much um, in commentary. Very strong runner. Yep. Yeah, and uh, doesn't shift away from a bit of contact. And just before then, before this scrum, he saw him make a good run down that left side and um, took a good tackle, held the ball up, and he was in a little bit of traffic and uh, went to ground. It's good to see that. Good afternoon, I see Jono Thompson's tuned in. Hope you're well, Jono. Looking forward to some of last man stands cricket action later on the year. Oh, good inside ball from Mazzarella. It's all the balls oh. picking up everywhere. Now it's there for Aaron Priest. Some good hands. Morosaki with it. Off there to Patrick O'Sullivan. Oh. Gives it off to <laughs> for the Ali brothers. Yeah, guilty of um, hanging out in the back seat for a second. <laughs> Rihanna trying to find the 10 metre line for the Tech Territory. Morosaki off to Spencer. That's fourth carry of the match. And some short passes to Popping. And a bit of a juggle from Morosaki. Doesn't lose it though. Now Dan Simpkinson on the one of these runs I was just talking about. And there's a penalty, yeah, there's a silly play from Fraser Tech. Yeah, he didn't need to do that. It was a good run there from Dan Popping before. Looking to get involved in his 50th game. He hasn't shooked away from running the ball up. Now we're looking good on attack there, and uh, some good one-off runs. Very flat on attack today of those from Melville. So, uh, besides I've got that one man standing super flat and the short back line behind. It um, seems to be just giving the Fraser Tech defence just a few headaches. Uh, turning to go for touch for Mel. They are doing the honours. Alright, Mel will put on attack. I think they'll be looking for Karaka again. He seems to be bringing things out here today. There he is, talking away to the young um, Simpkinson. Yeah, well, Simpkinson's inside actually, and you've got uh, on the outside, you've got uh, Nico Mashalrewa, and outside him is <coughs> Honey Karaka yep. hanging out on the wing. First of all, got to win the line out. Yep, does three Priest. And goes straight to ground. Masarewa with it. Oh, great run. And he's got some leads. This Luke Masarewa. And he's on Seven's player. Deeper Priest. Oh. And popping up all over the place. And uh, one of the Fraser Tech players <laughs> coming through just can't quite hang on. No, and that's the problem when you're playing flat like that. It doesn't take much to get a hand in there. But I'll have the ball back and they can start again from the set piece. Well, a couple of games we've, watched, we've seen on the live stream with uh, Melville, they tend to play quite deep. And their bats on attack. Yep. Today, though, they've been very short. Yeah, it's very flat. Um, yeah. You noticed very last week. On attack. Last week in the game against Mons, where both teams were very deep with um, runners, uh, but today it's been very flat. It looks like number twelve's calling play again. And they're just switching the bats around here in the phase of team. A few marking issues here. Marasaki going to feed the ball on five metres inside Fraser Tech's 22. Comes out to Colleen Waka. And Simpkinson leaves the ball behind. Gone back is the call. Marasaki tidying it up. Sits for some of the forwards from Melville. Just going a little sideways now. The one off runners. It's all at the moment. And Melville got a penalty. 
Oh, 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 oh he Luke makes the way and tries to go quick. No, he'll be asked to come back. Yes. Only a couple of metres in front of the mark. <laughs> <laughs> Only a couple. You should probably take this, I think. And uh, looks as though Michael Winter will just have a quick talk here to the tech captain. Yeah, a little bit of frustration keeping him in there when the Fraser tent forwards. He's been pushed out of the game a little bit. Point, point, point. And he's defending there a bit frustrated. And you can usually tell when one team takes game to dominate. I noticed the Harley brothers were standing out in the backs there for a minute. And um, looking to get involved in the back line, so uh, the half eight might be having a chat with him shortly about getting, um, getting back into the engine room. But now we're looking good right now. Just going to give themselves a bit of a break here while they look at the three. Well, it's not a bad um, play to go for the three, push it out to a convert, uh, up past a converted try. Um, 20, 23 minutes gone, actually, it's been pretty frenetic. Yeah. Um, so he has um, been no short of action, and there's been some good breaks as well. Um, particularly impressed with a couple of the backs, like I mentioned before, enjoying um, Honey Karaka's play. He seems to be running things in the young Simpkinson outside hunt. And equally as good, Terry Ponga on the other side has been playing well. And Gordon Bunce has had a couple of great breaks and uh, set up a beautiful try. So Rehana with this penalty kick. Just inside the 22. Turning the, the right hand upright. It's not too bad out there. It is light. And the flag goes up. 23 and a half minutes gone. Melville leading 13 5 over Fraser Tech. Acknowledgements coming in for you, the uh, Nick Shelston on the live stream. Yeah, there's a world's smallest fan club. <laughs> Good take there from Mazarewa. He's been playing well, steady as a ball. He's another one I'd love to see ball carrying numbers on, how many metres he makes in the game. Yeah, looks like that hurt though. He's just holding his arm right now, we might see that soon. Come back to his brother Nico. Nico tries to find touch, and it's hanging up in the air, and it does go into touch though. Yeah, it's a great and, uh, just um, line it, that will be just inside the 22. So a mistake there from Nico Marisorewa. Yep. Looks like his brother is just holding his shoulder there. He's nursing something. He um, came down in the tackle a little awkward, but he seems to be carrying on. A little leg injury against Hamilton Marist. He missed a couple of games because of it. Okay. This is a good chance here for Tech. And it's been more totally disruptive from... Melville, but uh, Fraser Tech doing the signing up. They've got a penalty advantage. Yeah, Dickerson, Dickerson appealing there to the umpire, ref. And he's, he seems to have got the penalty. You know, release of the tackle is the call. Yeah, he wasn't happy with that. And Fraser Tech will drill into the touchline of course, Michael Winter, along with Lewis of Collingwood, being um, named in the Farah Palmer Cup high performance refereeing for this season. Which is great to see Farrah Palmer Cup getting underway on the 15th of August. My team cup on the 11th of September. Oh, and good one for Masarewa. Masarewa getting up in front there. Kurosaki asking for some runners. Oh, good drive by Spencer. Really getting involved today, young Spencer. Saki doing some great work to get uh, forwards around the ball. Oh, oh, almost going to land on our head. Thankfully, uh, we're in a trailer <laughs> and some shelter. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic the kick right down towards us, and we'll see another line out here. Just, just outside of their 22, just sort of the 10 metre line. So Fraser Tech on attack. Good chance here again for them, and Ramsdale will be yelling out for the boys to get that ball secured down. And just want to Another short line out here for Fraser Tech has been quite well tidying it up. Dickinson tries it out to Lansdowne. Yeah, a couple of fours hanging out there. <laughs> from Simon Humble. Humble man, that's out. Now George Doha. There's a bit of heavy contact going in. And Hankerville making some metres. Still going right hand side of Fraser Tech, but they're making some good metres at the moment. Five minutes inside, Melbourne's 22. And that's just a one-off runners at the moment. 
It was looking promising for Fraser Tech, driving well to that right, and then back to line out here to the left. Bunce is out there calling for it. Oh, yeah. Melville have won a penalty as well. Oh, it's a real shame for Fraser Tech, they've done well there. Had a good chance of looking to attack on that right side. Well, the pick and goes are working for them at the moment. Just going right, just kept going blind there and making a couple of metres each time. Yeah, well, I feel like Dickinson's just getting into his work. Last week he played well, and as the game went on, he got more and more involved, and he just seemed to drive those forwards around in front of him. And he just looked like he was starting to get into his role there, but it's a little error. Set them back again, and this will give Melbourne a chance just to drive out of their territory again. It's very hard on the kick. Well, we might have hoped for a bit more out of that one, I think. So Fraser Tech's still in a good position here. Feels the line out. Sometimes it can be a bit of a lottery. So they're looking to uh, bunce and hung out here. Reasonably flat out there. This sort of bone left to uh, right to left actually across the field into where a camera person is up there. Yep. Got a fine job as always. Just waiting for the ball to make it to the line out. Give the players a little bit of a rest. I think they'll be looking to hit that front and take it down and secure it. Yeah, it's a bit scrappy there. Yeah, we'll probably take the one was against the throw. It's one each. Now that's been stolen. And then trying to take down forwards. Great drive. Sutty, they can go inside the oh. 22. Yes. And Fraser Tech has got a penalty. Yeah, he didn't let go of him there. And fair enough, penalty came. You've got to have a clear release, is what the referees say at um, tackle ball time. And if you don't do that, you end up costing inside a penalty. No, well, I don't think at any stage there he gave the opposition a, a, a chance to, to put that ball down or back. And he just kept fighting for it there. And he got pinned for it rightly. Fraser Tech. Asked for the, the kicking tape. Uh, 13 5. I think um, just to snatch another three points would be valuable to them right now and get within that try. Thanks, um, Mick Daly and James Roberts, for your kind words about the live stream. It's great to bring this to you. Uh, my name is Bevan Jenkinson, founder of Bev's Broadcasting, to bring uh, club rugby, community sports as well, doing a few other projects as um, times go by um, so it's great to see the people that support and appreciate it as oh. Cook Savage has pushed it out right, left hand left hand of the uprights and I think yeah. he uh, just struck that too hard actually yeah I think the wind just assisted that just a little bit around that left upright and that's the way that's going today just a little bit from, our, from on screen it's probably a little bit from your right to left it's coming across the field more so Kick, goal kicking is a bit like uh, the golf swing, isn't it? Um, you can't really push the ball too hard. Uh, can't swing too hard on it. No. Comes down to it, down as the 22. Kim Fabling with it. Gives it off to Nankerville. Just caught short of the 10 metre line. Melbourne Territory. Need for Harry. We don't actually have last names for the lot, for the Razor Tech lot, so we do apologise for just calling them by their Christian names. <laughs> Goes right hand side now to Kim Sabling and some juggling done there by Tapai Cook Savage. Right hand side and it's a good tackle on him. Eventually made. We saw last week too, Nick, um, how well Tapai Cook Savage he can pop up from anywhere, grab the ball, and all of a sudden he's underneath the posts. Yeah, he's an exciting player. He's certainly got some gas and he's got a good step. And as you see there, he just sort of shows and goes. And I'm not sure what he was doing there. It looked like he was trying to do a little bake or a kick or something but he just got himself in a tangle and pulled that ball into touch. Still no Fraser Tech will be happy with where they are in the field. They've been um, in their own half a lot this uh, this half so. Yeah well they've, they've definitely had territory over Melbourne in the last uh, 15 minutes. Yeah they've been looking good. Melbourne have won the line out though. Yeah. Just trying to inch forward a little bit through them all. One of the <coughs> Fraser Tech forwards trying to come in from the side. Moriaki finds Trey Pohipi and he can't offload it before he's tackled into touch. Right. One of the um as Fraser Tech have actually gone very quick here through to Fire Cook Savage. Fight out to Bunce. Now there for Lansdowne. There for Tafari inside. Nasharay all over him. Yeah, that's that seven style back three for Fraser Tech. Happy to run it from anywhere and take anyone on. 
Neville inside Fraser Tech's half still. Ball out there to Bunce with another run. Finds Cook Savage. Some great offloading here from Fraser Tech. Bunce again. And, and some great hands. Oh, well done. Tries it into Dickinson, is it? I think Bruce Dickinson has scored that one. Yeah, it looked like Bunce just got one there and just put one inside to him. And great support play by Fraser Tech, just backing up and linking really well down that right hand side. And they dominated for the last 15 minutes, as you said before. Yeah. And, and finally, they've converted some points into um, the territory they've had. Yeah. Did you take them to 10? Yep, so it's 13-10 uh, with kick to come for Fraser Tech. Well, I think Fraser Tech will be reasonably happy with this. Not sure how long to go. Eight minutes to go before half time, and they've just clawed their way back and possibly could get one behind. So I think the coach will be reasonably happy with that, considering the amount of possession that was sort of going to Melbourne in that first 20 minutes. But Melbourne should be pretty happy with their defence as well. Um, Fraser Tech to five foot Savage. Pushes out left again. Struggling from that uh, far right side. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, that was seen him kick a lot cleaner than what he what he's done the last two there, so uh, a bit of a technique issue really coming in there. Yeah, I think Melville if they um when we look backwards, just gone away from that territory game, but it is it is hard to have territory without the ball as well. Because they've just gone away from finding those long ranging kicks into the corners which put all that pressure on Fraser Tech at the start. So could be something they think about doing at half time, just having a chat about how they're gonna play the game. So Nico Masarayo to get us underway. The fullback for Melville, there's brother Luke playing uh, fullback. Great kick. It's a got a lot of hang hang time on it. Carry there from Fraser Tech inside the ten metre line. Still inside, still this side of halfway. Dickinson fighting in there for the ball. Oh, oh there's a big crack he do! And I think we Yeah, we're gonna have time off. We saw something very similar in the women's game and uh, Honey Karaka not doing uh, it was a big collision, big head collision. Look, we're just waiting for the live stream to catch up as it is a few minutes ahead. Yeah. It was just a yeah, head on head basically. <laughs> uh, for Karaka and one of the Fraser Tech players, Fraser Tech um, player looks to be fine, but some attention there. Yeah, well, I was a bit concerned there for the Fraser Tech number 15, Liam Coops Fabler, and he didn't see it coming at all, and he just sort of looked up and got that, what looked like a shoulder or a head, but he seems to be the one who's coming yeah, a little bit better I think Coops Fabling <laughs> might have, um, uh, yeah, might have got a shoulder in the way um, that's probably saved him, and Karakids ended up with the head being connected there. Um, Fabling just limping off there, so he might also have a bit of a leg injury. But tends to be walking back into position. Still a bit of concern around the Melbourne boy. Just have a little bit of claret coming out of the mouth there. He's, he's at least sitting up, which is a good sign. Yeah. If, if, if a player can get up and, and just sit up, um, you know, it's okay. It's when you see them just sprawled on the ground. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's when it becomes an issue. Uh, I'm sure they'll take all the precautions they need to. Getting a little bit of tension here. Giving everyone a little bit of a break. <laughs> I do apologise there, and fair um, replays are uh, something that uh, I, I did try earlier on in the season um, and had found though that uh, it, it's just one thing a little bit too many <coughs> to do with the live stream. It's getting a round of applause now. Yeah, he makes his way into the field. Looks like a blood bin from the looks of things. Yeah, quite possibly, but um, I, I certainly his head does need looking at yeah. in a big collision like that. It was a big collision, right? Felt that in my bones. Fraser Tech will take the ball and they're just outside, just inside the 10 metre line and near half. It's with Dickinson at the moment and Van's down out there is calling the plays. He's talking to the blind side winger. Looks like to Fuddy has been told to come in. Um, to Fuddy hanging on left hand side. Lands down. It's a good scrum here from Melville, but uh, Tech has got a penalty advantage. Lansdowne kicks it downfield. They'll come back to the advantage. Mm. No advantage. It's a bit scrappy there at the scrum, and I don't know if that's how it was supposed to go for Fraser Tech or Melville, but. Yeah, well, Melville's been pinged here for not driving straight, mm. was the call. And Fraser Tech will be happy with the result, though, and they'll keep down the line for that set piece. Well, with four and a half minutes to go, 
on our clock, just a reminder that that is only a rough estimate, it's not an exact time that we free, it's still to judge effect from time. Kick from Lansdowne, another good touch by there, he's a good player Lansdowne, so not afraid to run the ball up, he's got a good boot on him and he seems to set that back line out reasonably well. Oh. Oh. Great touch. Got in front of that one and stole it. Now make sure you are making some leaders halfway line there. Definitely for him. Good run from Mazarewa to his brother. Rosaki finds his brother Nico and he goes on a good run as well. Rosaki finds him finding Priest. Now to Spencer. No one going forward very well at the moment. Well, yep. Missed the trick, uh, Melville there. They thought they needed to go earlier. Small numbers, unfortunately, in the back line for them. There's a penalty advantage, though, as Priest has it. Onto some Priest attempt to traffic. Yeah, good tackle there by Peter Nelly. <laughs> Mason Rayla gives it to one of his players right in front of him. <laughs> and yeah. offside is a call, but it's Priest attempt that's offside yeah. in this instance. So Aaron Priest um, got up a little bit slow there. He would have felt that hit. It was a great tackle. Stop the his tracks. But, um, but Mel here, shot a goal. Push that lead out. Not too surprised about the decision, but um, the wind is just um, starting by. It's been really funny today, actually, mate. Um, comes and goes a bit. It's been an interesting game. If the um, steal against the line out there gets us back down to here after a couple of plays, then we have a shot at goal. So it seems to sort of run against the, the play. The, the points have been interesting today. Yeah, um, they're capitalising on, uh, on those line outs that they've uh, managed to steal. Yeah, certainly be a, uh, an area for people will be having a look at. They're just struggling with the line out at the moment. From 36 metres out from the posts, dead in front for Rivers Rehana. Yeah, they have been picking well today. You'd expect them to easily just tap this over and reset again. Same from Tapai Cook Savage, though. Um, it's not easy goal kicking out there at the moment. And now that wins, just starting to pick up a bit more yeah. as he's setting. It may just suit that um, right to left kicking style. Just holding in the ball in the breeze. And it's down the middle. Yeah, down the middle. It did hang up there for a little bit, but um, it went through and it's 16-10, Melville lead. With just under two minutes to go, first half. Fraser Tech needs to go back to the basics here, like last week the game, where they're looking just to drive it up, keep it in the forwards, and then fire it out to the exciting back line and get it back to Bunce. When he's involved, they seem to do well, especially when that back three get going. As St. Lansdowne kicks off again, the new player on the field. How could I... Sorry, it's not a it's Serena with the ball and kicked it off into touch. Yes. And that's half time, Nick. Um, interesting half we've had. Melbourne 16 10 leads. Your thoughts? Um, I think uh, Melbourne deserve it. They've played really well for the first 20 minutes. Tech came back for a little while um, and fought well. But Melbourne, all in all, played the tactical game well. They've done well on the line outs. The set piece has been good. And I've been particularly impressed with um, Rehana and um, Karaka at um, number 12. It's having a good game. All right, so join us back very shortly. 16-10. Melbourne are leading Fraser Tech round eight of the competitions, also doubling as a stag trophy match. Join us back very shortly for the second half.
back to the second half here at Collins Road. Fraser Tech taking on Melville 16-10. Melville, the home side, currently leading. My name's Bevan Jenkinson. Alongside me in the comments seat, again, Nick Shoston. And uh, Nick, what would you expect from both sides in the second half? Well, if I was a Melbourne coach, I would have been talking to them about um, putting that ball back into the corners. They did really well when they found that space. You know, when the ball hits the green, they're looking really good. Uh, but we'll be keeping it away from the back three, though, so it's a risky, it's a risky way to play. But I think that's how they got their points in the first half, which is just driving and turning Craig to keep around. It's been pretty even, and uh, you know, Tiltroy's really been swaying a lot to who's had it, and, um, but position's been sitting pretty nicely at 50-50, maybe a little bit more towards Fraser Tech, but uh, Michael Winter blows time on, the kick goes deep inside the 22 and left there by Melville, but, uh, it's a great kick, and the, the assistant referee there, attempting to find his mark all the way down, <laughs> Be the sort of the crazy tech team leader line. Yeah, that's a fantastic clearance. Really good clearance there, and it's driven right out of that tough side. Crazy tech won't be too upset though. Right? Yeah, well, the other thing we noticed in the first half was that you can score a try in this game from just about anywhere in the field. So uh, we talk a lot about uh, field position, but both teams looking pretty dangerous. Yeah, both teams very well known for the attacking side. Uh, this looks also, whoever wins this match is, um, takes home the stag trophy for the season. Now all the way to Paltapu, and currently at this point, uh, that will be the live stream next week, the last round of the match. Fraser Tech will travel down to Otohonga to take on Otohonga, top of the table there. <coughs> Um, it's, it was actually a very, one of the greatest games of rugby I've ever called, Nick, between Melbourne and Oakshahonga out here. It's just end to end stuff the whole 80 minutes. Um, Stacey Blue were commentating there, and even she was blown away. But it um, was a cracking game. It was Fraser Tech win the scrum, though. Oh, that's yeah, a great Bunce. Well done. Good run from Bunce. Oh, completely yeah. behind. Oh, yeah. Tidying it up through Patrick O'Sullivan. Right out there to Trey Fahipi. Five minutes inside, now in half is Melville. Morisaki finding Hayden Spencer on the 10 metre line. <coughs> there for Rehana. Now finds Sammy Ali. Sammy yeah, Ali's been out in the back line a lot today. The two of them actually. Oh, like a good prop, should be, they say. <laughs> Rivers Rehana with a bit of a Gary Owen. Lansdowne coming forward. Good take from Lansdowne there. Yeah. Yeah, had Waka coming through, but he's taken it very well. And there's a penalty. He's got himself a penalty there. Yeah. And uh, I think that might be Luke, uh, Nico Masharoa well, that's been pinged for not um, staying on his feet at rock time. Yeah, just up there. He just got sort of caught in an odd position and struggled to get away. So he'll just crazy take the ball. So I'm going to look to go down into the corner and start again. It seems to be the way Fraser Tech is going to play at the moment. They're looking for that field territory. So the line out now, six metres inside Melbourne's half. It's a little bit scrappy when we've got back into the second half so far. No team really looking to dominate or hold that ball. No, and uh, Scrappy's the best way to say that. Now Dickinson, the try scorer from Fraser Tech. It's ball popping around inside, and Fraser Tech are going to get onto the scoreboard for the first time in the second half. Well, that's a great run from Dickinson, a little snipe and a little side step and he's cut inside. And he's turned the gas on there and just found the support by having a strong run over the line. And Fraser Tech will be happy with that. That'll just get them a little bit closer here and this gives Brad Cook Savage another shot at the goal. Not so well in the first half of this goal kicking, but what you'll notice here is the wind's going the other way, which just might favour him. The first half he was just missing the left arm. Up row. And, uh, that one's still being just circling around and coming and going a bit. Savage comes in, strikes it. A bit tidy on the edge of this time, and it is 
tidy straight through the posts and Melville for the first time in this match to hit at the front 17-16 Scrappy there, so um, again, it gets developed play like it has been in the game. Dickinson with that good snipe down the left hand side, he's been pretty good. Just okay. Nico Mashray will get us back underway. Bit of hang time on that, but Dickinson underneath. He'll return the kick. <coughs> Bit of a wobbly one. Uh, finding touch, 11 metres still inside their own territory, throws a tip. The referee just calling changes here. Well, Honey Karaka has been just coming back onto the field after that uh, really nasty knock. Well, it's, it's good to see that the young man's okay as he uh, gets back out there. Tarana Richards Cox said coming off, back off the field, he probably will be back onto the Back on at some point, I'm sure. We have no ball though. Still waiting for the ball here. I remember doing a mastermind quiz at one point. Nick, and the first one up on the question on the quiz was the sports the sports section, and it was in wheelchair rugby. What sort of what um what's the ball? Circle, oval, square, or doesn't have one? <laughs> what was the answer? The answer's definitely round. I can tell you that much. I've been involved in the sport ten years. <laughs> Play with the volleyball is um, oh, metre ball as it's always not also known is Re Rivers Rehana onto the ten metre line. Great take there from Priest in the line out. It was a bit um, messy to start off with. Now popping in his fiftieth. Rehana finding Walker. Walker with a little chip over the top. A couple of chases coming, but uh, Lindsay on inside finds Kim Slaveman back there. Charge down from Walker. And Kim Slavling doing some tidying up on the ground. And throws a tick under some big pressure here. His bunt's going backwards. And now for Kim Slavling making some metres. There's a good tackle there. Is to buy Cook Savage, can't get rid of it. What a good tackle from Melville. And Call for a penalty, and there is now. Maybe just some hands there. Just not releasing, but um, they're just crabbing them. And, um, not, you know, once you've brought to ground, you, first attacker must release the second runners, the ball carrier must release the ball, and Fraser Tech was um, just basically trying to get out of do touch there. Yeah, well, you're right, and it started at a phonetic pace too. They're really scrambling for it here. And, uh, looks like the loose forwards are getting stuck in, but it didn't help with this time. We just want to see what we're looking to do here. They're going to kick for touch by the look of things. Now yeah, we're looking to uh, kick for touch, take the line out. The line out has been good. Uh, as we saw before, Aaron Priest took a good one. He just bobbled it and took it down really nicely. And um, send Moriaki off. Priest doing the calling, he's one up. He's jumping well at number four today, Vic. Just getting a little bit of niggle now. <laughs> Thanks to Torano Richards Coxie for um, trying to help us out and coming through there. <laughs> Saying it, his eyesight's as good as mine <laughs> from this distance. Definitely a little hard to see what went on in the air, but um, it's like Melbourne. Will yeah, free kick it um, in the scrum. Melbourne 
with the ball for an attack yet. So possibly um, ball handling was the call there at line out. And um, thanks for clarification from Bill Pollock. There's a lot there. Does look as though it's actually one of those rare ones. Um, I actually had one myself in a refereeing game on this exact field too in R eighty fives where the um, halfback tried to dummy from the base of the ruck. <laughs> Can't do that. No, that was um, banned a few years ago. Melville, now the scrum on the five, five metre line from Cook, straight to six half, uh, try yeah, calling the moves here. Watch him and the blindside Willie are coming in. No, but it's popped Bruck. out. Nicholson with it and oh. he's picked it straight to Dutch. Yeah, and, and the look on his face will tell you everything. There's a lot of yelling going on and um, interesting to see what the call is here. saying play on. Yep, so just a little bit of on. confusion there and just as the game gets a bit scrappy the ref just gets involved there and tries to tidy it up but um, I think the look on uh, Dickinson's face will tell you everything he, he about might have got one he might have got away with that yeah <laughs> no, good little breakaway from him he's definitely got some gas well, we saw a try last week too actually where the ball popped out of the um, scrum he did too and he managed to skip over the five minutes once again though we're lacking the one thing one of the few one of the things you definitely do need a game of rugby to play, and that's the ball. <laughs> Said something too, actually, about the way the game's being played. If um, people are worrying about the next set of phase rather than actually with the ball. Yep. And um, yeah. here we go, Priest, is it? Aaron Priest pulling over, they've gone to the front, and there's a railer. Fires out, and he's correct here again, he's getting the ball. Good run from him. He's set. Another good run from Priest. Priest getting heavily involved at the moment for Melville. He's doing very well. The right hand side there for Melville. Apologise to both Honey Cutica's family and Bodine Walker. Uh, <coughs> our team list has two, but um, Honey Cutica's in there. And I've just realised that that's the um, confusion with Bodine Walker that's wearing number 12 for Mel. <laughs> As Iron Priest has won this for Mel. And Hayley Spencer with the ball. Yeah, Spencer getting heavily involved today. He hasn't been afraid to run that ball up, and neither has his counterpart. Popping in his 50th game. It's popped up from all over the place. Luke Mashaway with it. He saw the 22 metre line throws the tech territory. Another one attack once more. Position and territory has been with them of late. It's Frank Ali. Is the fourth popped out. He's been a knock on from Melville. And throws the tech getting out of jail a bit there. Yeah, well again, um, Ali, Danny and Frank out in the back line there. Not afraid to get out and mix it up amongst the backs, but he's just spilt the pill there as he's gone into contact. But a uh, good build up from Mel, although I'll just be a bit of disappointed with that. And um, Bodine Walker at number 12 is having a strong game, isn't he? He is very, and uh, typical of him too, another New Zealand Sevens representative. Okay. My name is Bevan Jenkinson, great to have you wherever you are tuned in. I see somebody tuning in from. Uh, we can't really call it the home of Sevens, but um, there's probably the spiritual home of um, Sevens Rugby in Ho Hong Kong. Because uh, if you're not aware, Sevens was actually... Um, <coughs> the idea of Sevens was brought up in Scotland of all places. <laughs> bit of trivia there from Bev. You, you know, good with useless information. Raise the tech, though. There's no useless information in that. They've kicked it straight out to touch outside the 22. No, well, that's both Dickinson now and Lansdowne guilty of just finding touch on the full from outside their 22. And now we'll be hot on attack here now. And you can already see uh, some. Waka calling the shots out there, talking to his young first drive. That's on the 22 line. Yep, and I've just noticed that uh, Mazarewa and Spencer were just hovering in front of them in the back line there. Oh, no, there's been one there. 
from Nathan for Fraser T. And oh, he's left it behind. So he's not put one on. Just running a bit too flat there. Yeah, well, Spencer was out there for the attacking move, but also found himself in a defensive pattern and really went in and cut that ball off. Took him by surprise and he's left it behind. And you've got a ball runner like Alex Sutty, though, and um, there's a change in position as quick as that. Quite well done there from uh, Melbourne player. Two switch. Um, and be mindful of it too. Yeah, well the loose trail actually for Melbourne have done really well today and I've been particularly impressed with um, Spencer. He's been making some huge tackles and he's thrown himself around there. He's not the biggest guy out there on the field. No, no, it was his uncle. I see he's wrapped up down um, underneath the posts here. <laughs> it's the Melbourne assistant coach. Melbourne did put it to him. Melbourne set on attack here. Yeah, and Horosaki finding Rota now. Rehana finding Rico finish away. Right, makes a way up. Three, four, Honey Karaka. Oh, good run from him. Just inside the 22 at the moment with Melbourne. Oh, here they are again. Now Spank Ali. Breaks away. Drop down. Just saw the five metre line. Here for Priest. Priest getting involved at the moment. Halfback's calling them out. Sadi calling his runners. Gap there, but he was just shut down by Dickinson and a good little run there. Now Spencer fighting Masarewa. Yes! He's just bundled into touch there. Ben Brownlee's got a slag up. There was a great piece of hands there from Luke Masarewa to get that pass off in the tackle. Yeah. Uh, he's been sneaking around on this left flank here for a few plays looking for a try, and I think he thought he might have had one there. But uh, good defence there by the Tech player. Notice the. Um, Ali Brothers hanging in the back line a few times now. It seems to be more than a trend. Yeah, well, they've, <laughs> they've been doing well with their ball carrying as well. Yeah, very good. Oh, there's one over the top. One for Sam Cox. Just short of the try line. Mazzarella out to the left again. Oh, this is Hillary. Hands on the ruck. Well, 16 17. Melbourne might be looking to kick this. Just going to call out one of the Fraser Tech forwards there and just have a chat with him. There's some di little discipline creeping in. Yeah. Um, and Fraser Tech have been on the back foot for a bit at the moment. Mm. So they really do need to watch the discipline. It's not the first right time in the front. game. It's not the first time in the game the, fr the Fraser Tech forwards have been called over and spoken to. So interesting to see what we're going to do here. And no, Melville decided to go for this ground at our set piece. I don't know about your music taste, um, Nick. But one of my favourite songs of all time is going out, Sweet Caroline from Neil Diamond. Yeah, I can hear that in the background. <coughs> Perhaps those girls are having and uh, starting to party after a, a great win before. Yeah, I turned up just about a couple of hours before kickoff for the women's match, and um, they were certainly going and <laughs> partying. Well, not but you know, partying sensibly, of course, for the game still to play. Yes. Um, Scrum call here from Mel. Very big, big night after they have won the 2020. Go our women's premiership final today. Sure, the, um, the Melbourne girls will have a, a, a great night and a sensible night and, and enjoy their win. Just notice here that some of the Melbourne uh, sideline are warming up and stretching and uh, adjusting. So we could see some changes starting. We're getting close to that last quarter of the match, and it does look like a few uh, people there taking some deep breaths. So, is it number two? Cox? Uh, Sam Cox has come off hobbling. Yes, after that good run um, towards the line. 
Got the lap penalty. He looks like he's struggling now with an ankle or a knee. Still smiling though. Good to see the big man smiling as he leaves the field. So Melville have opted for the scrum here. Um, Boyd's come into the hooker position for Melville. Look at that, it says it's 7 8. And for a sake, it's a feed now. The hook go right hand side. That big scrum coming from the big Rako really getting stuck in out there. Murasaki directing the forwards. The Aoi brothers are in there. Not the back line this time. Yeah, we'll be looking to use the back soon, I'm sure. We'll be driving in the forwards, they're keeping it tight. And this is now we're keeping the forward a little bit more, so we might just keep it tight and close at the moment. Short again with hopping. Here's the hopping. Bowden Walker's just standing behind that ruck. And it's been knocked on. Well, it was a bit of a call, actually. I thought Melbourne might have scored, but um, yeah. the arm wasn't straight up from Michael Winter. Yeah, a few of the tech supporters pretty happy there, just behind the post, and a couple of chahus there. There might have been a big hit. But, of course, we've seen Melbourne have been doing very well when Fraser Tech have got the ball five metres from their own line. Yeah. Um, Fraser Tech, you just need to win the scrum and then clear it out for a pretty quick reset and um, keep trying to move out of the d red zone at the moment. Yeah, I mean, and Fraser Tech possibly a little bit guilty just in this half, just holding that ball in their own sort of red zone, I guess, in their own, even out of, inside that 22, they should be looking to clear, and they've just been a bit guilty of that, Dickinson had a couple of good runs, and he's been making some good tackles, but he can't do it by himself. And I think maybe uh, Lansdowne might have to go to the forwards and just talk about setting that ball a little bit more sensible, getting a bit more structure. It's only one point in it. Jump set there, Melbourne getting a bit of a push in. Look, Fraser Tech holding tight at the moment. Comes down to Lansdowne. Hasn't found touch though. Trey Fahey been going backwards. Nico Masharayo with him. Up to the halfway line. And he shrugs off one. The back he do from the tech. Oh. Right, working out. He's got Pommy back inside and it's been knocked around. Michael Winters ruled this has been knocked back from Fraser Tech into touch. Now we'll all have the line out. Oh, good play there. Fantastic uh, attack there. Oh, no! Now we'll building from the back. It wasn't a bad kick. It managed to find the green, but um, smart play by Mazzarella. Knocked over the first one and then hit that left that flank. And I'll have position here again. One point behind, I'll be looking to inject it, but I'm just watching the left wing just slowly creep into a position here, so keep an eye out for Trey Pomini. Popping into the up of it, and then gone straight. It did sort of look straight down their own line. Um, but uh, Fraser Tech getting a bit lucky there with the call. So well, not with the call, sorry, with the throw. Right, so I think Sam Cox will be sitting on the sideline there thinking about that throw, wondering what it might have been like if it was him. The replacement hooker just struggling to get the ball in straight. Sam Cox, he just picked up his chair and stole on a couple of metres so he can keep, keep an eye on the game. Yeah, he'll be very interested after that. I'm sure he'll give that, uh, the replacement hooker a bit of gibbet training about that throw. But Fraser Tech here in a position to clear the ball. Dickinson's had a good game here, so they'll be looking to find Lance down and just clear that out. Thanks to Sam Cox for just confirming it was his hammy, not his ankle. Yep, so there you go, it's his, uh, it's his hammy. Hopefully that comes right quickly. He had a big game in the, in the first half. Yeah, he's quite well. Is Pat Lance now kicking towards touch? Yeah. Finds it quite comfortably. So we'll take it to halfway and we'll. See a line out right in front of us here with Melville with the ball. Two, two line outs straight in front of us, Nick. Yeah, we've been good today. <laughs> <laughs> Asked for it last week, it took a while. 
So the replacement hooking now to um, make up for it. As we see, one of the big alleys leaving the field. He's had a big game. Looks like that's Frank Arley that's come off the field. Dickinson out. Getting out the front. And Dickinson's down taking it up. Here for Dickinson. He's fired out left hand side. He's left behind. Now it's one of the tech pro preserves. And he's away! It's not Benny Kent's favourite. And he's over! That's a great That's happened from nowhere, Nick. <laughs> so that's a great ball, wasn't it? I've skipped out there as you look at the replay. Oh, yep. we have one, but when you rewind the video, you'll see that it's a little skip past the air, and I thought for a second it might have just delayed the, the, the speed of the movement, but um, it was picking up there. I'm not sure who was it was. Was it a replacement player out there on that left wing? Yeah, um, I can't quite see the number, but um, Kim Stabling's going to end up with it being attributed to that one. Yeah, it's a great inside ball anyway, and um, Liam Kim Stabling, after that early um, head knock, or shoulder has um, scored a fantastic try down the left left flank. Yeah, it's still only a six point game though. Uh, Melbourne won this game by my calculations. They confirm a top three of uh, three of the four semi finalists. Uh, Fraser technically they win. They confirm the top four of being Hotepu, Otrahonga, Melbourne, and Fraser Tech themselves. Okay. Um, but still, of course, <coughs> sixteen minutes to go in the game. Still a long way to go. Well, here's, um, here's the interesting picking style, Cook Savage. Shuffles around. And it might just hang up no. and bounces in front of the goalpost and unsuccessful conversion. Still a six point game here, Nick. Yeah. Got a cracker to finish. Yeah, it's going to be a big finish here. Not long to go now. Probably got 15, 15 minutes to go. Ben. Eight points in it. And so Melbourne just reading the replacements now with a few changes, getting some fresh legs out there. They'll be looking to, to get some early points. There's been a change in halfback. Yeah, Morris Saga coming off. And uh, Morris Stone coming on in his 50th match, son of the um, famous Waikato player Arthur Stone. Very famous and name in the Waikato, Arthur Stone. Five foot savage. Managing to secure that one. It's outside the 22. Well, that's a good tackle there from uh, the Big Ali. Vincent Green with the ball carried here, comes back to Lansdowne this time. And the hang up, the arm's long enough, I might actually catch it. Yeah. You're right there, Nick, that yeah, was actually... That was quite close. That was very close. <laughs> so exciting times here. Uh, we'll have another line-out almost directly in front of us again. As you might have heard that through the mic, the big bang on the tin roof there. <laughs> I was kind of joking that if I hung up the heads there, I might catch it. But, uh, I wish I had almost whacked to the head, mate. Yeah, not straight there again, unfortunately, from Melbourne. Under 22, under 10 metre line now. We can go back towards the 22. Yeah, Scrubby yeah. ball out there. He'll struggle to make the bonus line. Got a great run from, uh, is it Bunce? Yeah, Bunce there. Yeah, they had a quiet game compared to last week. Matt Lansdowne finds some open space. Nico Masharewa going backwards into the 22. And tries to get rid of Hugo Nankerville. Can't get rid of Tapai Cook Savage though. Well, he's a tough man to get down, Mazza oh, Razor. And Fraser Tech have won this. Here's a good hit there from. Oh, fantastic Melbourne. play behind the back and ball. Fraser Tech have got numbers left hand side, but he's not going to give it though. He's just taken a quick second to lock. Lands down back inside to Tapai Cook Savage, but there's enough Melbourne players there. Nico Masselray was down in play and Fraser Tech have got a penalty. Yeah. What do you do if, you, if you're Fraser Tech here, Nick? Well, I think Fraser Tech would be silly but to do anything but go for the shot here and just increase that lead. It was a great build up and a um, fantastic kick from Lansdowne as he found a huge amount of space just down there on the left hand side. So they've called for the scrum. So by the looks uh, Fraser Tech have actually offered for the scrum there, Nick. Well, that's <laughs> interesting. Interesting call. Okay. I thought you've only really got two options there. I uh, kick the touch or they go to the goalpost, but no, they've done. Um, well, they know something we don't. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Lansdowne's um, just starting to increase his um, sort of movement around the game. He's getting heavily involved at the moment, and he's sort of a great option there, just kicking it deep into Melville's um, half and really so exploited some space out there. Nico Masarova coming off, is it something off a little bit there? Oh, yeah. uh, Terrain of Richards Coxie coming onto the field. He's had a good game, Mazzaro. He'll be happy with his game. Strong runner. He's good on defence and 
just taking some great restarts. My name's Stephen Jenkinson, alongside me in the comment seat, Nick Shoston. Great to have you wherever you are tuning in. You see if you are just watching and wondering what happened in the women's final, Melbourne managed to win that 19-10 over Hamilton Old Boys. There's <coughs> is, is a one-off runner there for Patrick Osborne, and just, he's just lost it short of the try line. Comes out there for Bogey Locker, and he will try and kick it down the field, but hanging up the hands, I can't catch it that time, mate. <laughs> Probably better, uh, better to do that the first time, Nick, when uh, almost whacked on the head. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a great run from Patrick Osborne. He's just a little bit unlucky there at the end. Um, you know, we saw earlier in the um, game he had a good run down that left hand side and set up that inside ball for the fullback. And again, a good run there, just didn't quite finish, though. Man of the big reputation is Patrick Osborne, one of the Travis Melbourne won this. Aaron Priest has got one against the throat. Oh, and, it's uh, just probably a kick over the top. <laughs> Here to Pia Cook Savage there trying to run that back, but he got around the defenders easily and then just managed to drive that ball down the right hand touch line and ended up in a good spot there. But Alex Sutty coming off the Fraser Tech, being replaced by Soli Vaka. He's had a good game, um, Alex Sutty. He's ran the ball reasonably strong and been good in the tackle. And all good take there from Patrick O'Sullivan. Well, the locks have been good for Melbourne today. Both locks have been increased, taking the ball out. There for Boyd, finding Rehana. Rehana kicks down to, towards Fire Cook Savage. No problems for him. Off to Kim Fabling. Tries to show Melbourne the ball. And fires it out left hand side. Nice bounce out there on that left wing. Good, good tackle on him though, just short of the 22. There for Dickinson though. Yes, good ball. Recycled that well. And inside the 22, I suppose the tech. Currently. Yeah, you can see Dickinson there marshalling his forwards, just pushing around, driving them in front of him, keeping him there, looking to get that ball out quickly. And oh, I suppose oh. the tech have knocked it on. And just as I say that, it might be the commentator's curse, a little knock on. Have you done that in a few games you've commentated, Nick? I, I know you normally do it with me, but I can't recall the time you've yeah. put the commentator's curse on. No, that now, be the first time, I think. Now, now you can call yourself a true commentator, I always <laughs> say. You've got to do the curse to um, call yourself a true commentator. Yeah, but I'll still put the onus back on Dickinson there. I mean, um, you can call it from up here, but there's only one person who can knock it on, and that's, that's unfortunately the guys on the field. From Melbourne here, we're looking to reset. We're just being further and further behind as the game goes on, and the scoreboard pressure is coming as that time is slowly ticking down. We're going to have to do better than playing in the 22 at the moment, and we're going to have to start by looking at the territory. Hunter's had a good game, but he's just been a little bit vacant for the last little while. It's hard to, it's hard to look good though when you haven't got the ball. On the field at the moment, Luke. Nico. Hobbled off the fort, but Darnell finding themselves back inside their own 22 currently. And back for Rehana. And there's a get out the fly by his guard at the fly line. There for Cook Savage finds Kim Fabling. Osborne with it. There goes Patrick Osborne off for a run now. Good job to Just halfway. Over the halfway. Austin Fraser Tech there with the ball, they're up by six currently.
Well, that's a great run. It's got them into a good position here. If they can just utilise that left hand. Ben Saban goes left hand side. Inside the Melbourne 22. Corey Togi down the back end, back, back play. Melbourne making the tackles counts at the moment though. Don't know if Fraser Tech managed to score here. They'll be in big danger. Yeah, Melbourne struggling here with the back to the Cook right. Savage calls up to the right hand side. Comes through the bunts. Now to Terry Pongi. Cook Savage finding bunts. Right hand side, it was a bit of a wobbly pass from the back of the ruck. They go short. Open side now. Nathan. Nathan. He's an advantage. Just short of the try line is Fraser Tech at the moment. This is good up from Fraser Tech. They're looking like her. They just need to play the safe game here. And Lounsdown is going to crash over. There you go. Pressure told in the end. Yeah, that's a great run there. And they just got too close to the line. And too big and too strong there just to stop the guy. Good defence from Melville to holding on that long. But Fraser Tech just looking a little bit more organised around that ruck and more. And controlled really, really well by Reese Dickinson and Matty Lansdowne in close there. Just marshalling their troops around left and right and using the open space. And Melville just struggled to keep that D up and stay strong. I know that was coming off a few phases, but I think uh, from memory last week, uh, Matt Lansdowne managed to score a try very similar um, off a scrum against Morrinsville. So um, certainly a player that can uh, just duck and sort Duck and quick. Yeah, and he's got the size too, so he can definitely um, push past the first defender. Just a little bit concerning, Corey Togo's still on the ground getting some treatment. Um, seems to be looking at a neck injury maybe. Or it's either a neck or a shoulder, yeah. Yep. Those, all the guys out there are giving him a bit of attention, so... So, Cook Savage goes pretty quick. Yep, no problem and with that for him. Conversion successful, it's 29-16. 13 point ball game, just over... Four minutes to play, second half. Great to have you wherever you are tuned in. Evan Jenkinson alongside me, Nick Shoston. It's great to have you week in, week out for the 2020 Waikato Rugby Club season. It's been an interesting one we've had in the school, so we've still got one, week more, one more week competition to play. Fraser Tech is a hang on here. A top four will be confirmed between Hotepu, Oktahonga, Nowell and Tech themselves. Um, and they'll also take home the stag trophy for the season two. Next week they're away to Otrahonga. Now will they travel over to Cambridge to play Haltapu, which uh, that will be the live stream of the match of the week next week as well. Awesome. Yeah, well the way Fraser Tech have been building over the last couple of weeks, you have to consider them as real contender finals. Good back three and a solid forward pack. Oh no, now will have butchered this kickoff. Yeah, they won't be happy with that, and that's the. Um, the first mistake they've made from a set piece really today and um, it's just starting to tell them now as we're only four minutes away from the end and there's a few heads down and the forwards are struggling to get there a bit for Melville so they just need to pick this up and the try could make this interesting going into the last few minutes. Yeah but Tech have got the ball and uh, they won't mind that at all themselves. I see also a couple of the Melville women's players who took out the 2020 Gallagher Cup final earlier on today, 19-10 over Hamilton Old Boys. They're sitting on a few players standing on the sideline here. Yeah, they'll be supporting strong. Just interesting here, I've just been watching Dickinson away in the middle of the field having a sneaky little chat with Liam Cooks Fabling. So maybe look for something a little bit interesting out here on this right flank as many lands down on the left hand side and marshals his troops as well. So just looking for Dickinson maybe to do something around the short side here and maybe snipe to the right. Could be wrong, but definitely a bit of dialogue going on out there. A couple of options here for Dickinson, also talking to the man at the back of the scrum as well. So maybe an 8 9 come right with Team Fabling. Just as you say that, you can see Luke Mazaraja is up the other side, just looking around, scanning his options, anything to see if he's going to scope or corner flag left or right. And of course, the player of Tapai Cook Savage, he's um, sort of bended into the sideline, he's standing right on the sideline here, right hand side. Very deep, and just then you see Dickinson just sneak away to his right, so I'm thinking they're going to go. It's looking probably where they might go, but of course, you know, you've also got eight that might break up to go left. If Dickinson tries to bring a few defenders or on side. Yeah, that's true, and Big Osborne out there on that left flank had a great run before, so. There's a lot of options here for Fraser Tech, looking good. Oh, Reset scrum, had a few of those this season, but um, scrums are getting better. 
bit of work for Rahana to do out here. Yeah, somebody's been five to cover. Uh, to five uh, to cover Liam's team Saban. Here we go, they get it set. Yeah, he plays a tick with a good scrum. Looks as though they're all going right. Two teams stabling. Got Cook Savage outside him. Oh, tries to offload in the tackle, but he knocked it on. Barnage is being played the whole way. Stacey Flula looks very happy about that. There's been Simpkinson. I've seen Stacey Strother, Bodine Walker. Bodine Walker was leading some space. Can he find some support? There's a penalty advantage being played. It's a lockdown. He's been one of the standouts this afternoon, Bodine Walker, and look, he's going to go again. Finds to Rainer Richards, Coxie. Now off to Big Bash or Rayla. Can't offload the tackle. Cook Savage trying to pitch it for Kant. Well, I think Fraser Tick were lucky to get away with that. Oh, no, 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 no. But going forward. Now start off to Danny Ali. Successful boy. Now off to Spencer. Spencer with half a break. There's a Rayla. Bash or Rayla. Yes! Outside to. Well, that was an um, interesting set of play there, Nick. Yeah, well, you can't help but think the replacement halfback might have just gone the wrong way then. He had a space and he just tucked to his left and got tackled maybe just short of the line. Um, they held up and Melbourne back on attack. So four minutes to play here at Collins Road. Just a reminder that the time you see on the live stream is only a rough estimate. Um, comes down to referee's call about the time. I have to say I've been impressed with uh, Hayden Spencer this evening this afternoon. His interplay between Luke Mazzarella and himself has been exceptional. Um, and again there, yeah, just some good interplay, um, driving towards that left hand side of the 22 of Fraser Tech. Um, but a big game for a small man. So Wayne Booten on the, the Melville coach is actually telling me he's got two minutes to go. We'll just have to wait and see. Could get a very exciting here in the last few minutes if uh, Melville managed to cross the line. And, uh, yeah, score under the post, take a quick conversion, you've got time, time again. <coughs> and of course you'll see the kickoff. Great crowd here at Collins Road as Kahu Boyd speeds the little screw. Oh, and it's come out again. The come out, Melville's side. There's an advantage for them though. Uh, Dickinson can't do it enough to hold. Pop back with his tackle. Kahu Boyd goes left hand side, inside to, outside again to. Bashareva has gone to touch. Now, so I, uh, possibly if he had sold the dummy then he might have gone for it, but uh, it looks like it. That is it. Fraser Tech have won this game 29-16. That has been a brilliant game followed up by the uh, <coughs> followed after the women's final. Nick Shoston, um, Fraser Tech probably the deserved winners. Here, coming yeah. away, coming over across town. Yeah, I couldn't disagree with that. Fraser Tech have played a great game of rugby um, under the under pressure from Melbourne at the start for a little while there, but um, really came back and dominated really well. I have to say, I'm really impressed with young uh, Reese Dickinson again today. Controlled the proceedings pretty well. A couple of great runs from Jordan Bunce, and again that back three just dominating the game. So, Fraser Tech winners 29-16. Uh, in the penny of bees, they also won that. Now, although won't go home unhappy, winning the 2020 Galahad Cup final in the women's comp. My name is Bevan Jenkinson on behalf of Vicky Rose Green, who was in commentary with me for the women's match. Nick Shoston as well, my camera people. My name is Bevan Jenkinson. It has been a privilege. Thanks very much, guys. And uh, tune in next week when we bring you Melville versus Haltapu in Cambridge.